Hi, I'm Mark from London Camera Exchange, and we're here in Munich with Canon. I'm really, really pleased to say that we've got John Morris here, who's the product marketing manager yeah. for EOS R and RF lenses. Thank you, John, for your time today. You're welcome. So we've got a series of questions for you, John. And the first one I've got here is, how has Canon incorporated feedback from users in the development of the new product? That's a great question. Uh, so yeah, we have incorporated a number of uh, people's comments and feedback for both models. Uh, obviously, it's been four years since we launched the R5, and that's a lot of time for us to really truly consider what the next generation R5 should look like. And we have refreshed every area of performance in this camera. You'll see the speed, the autofocus, the image quality. Um, we have incorporated what customers are saying about what they want from an R5 and an R1. So a couple of examples, um, you know, in particular, the R5 is designed to be an extremely versatile camera. And we're looking at a very wide market that's going to look at an R5 camera. Um, and so we've tried to incorporate a number of performance improvements in that camera to make it as versatile as possible. And for the R1, you know, it's the top end professionals who are at the top of their game for news and sports in particular, who want a one series camera uh, to be the absolute highest performance reliability um, in, in our flagship. And having hands-on experience yesterday in terms of uh, durability and versatility. I mean, it's a pretty impressive unit in terms of how it's sealed and um, um, you know, being put together. Um, what kind of challenges did Canon face when you were actually you know, creating uh, the new R1, especially the R1? Um, you know, what, um, you know, how did you overcome any, any challenges when, when developing them? Well, the expectation for a one series is sky high because the one series over the decades that the One Series has existed, is there's such a high expectation for it to be the flagship, and that means it needs to perform in any situation and be a true, worthy One Series camera. So, you know, how do you push things forward? How do you push the autofocus beyond what it is today in the R3 or in the 1DX Mark III if people have been using that for sports and news? Um, there's a high expectation. They're always high performing products right now. But in this new one series, we needed to push the performance, particularly of the autofocus, beyond what's possible. So we have developed a new sensor which is both back illuminated stacked, so very, very fast sensor itself. And we've also incorporated the new imaging platform called the uh, Accelerated Capture System. So this is comprised of now two processors, the Digic Accelerator and the Digic X. So the Digic Accelerator is doing massive computation, looking at um, scene and what the sensor is reading out from what the photographer is looking at, and it will perform you know, judgments based on um, players in ball sports, what's going on, what's in the scene, and then process that data to provide excellent subject recognition and tracking. And so you've got that system going on uh, to judge all that for the autofocus. And then you've also got a sensor that um, provides cross-type AF. So that's the first time in the R series that we've seen that. That means that it can have both horizontal sensitivity and vertical sensitivity uh, when tracking a subject. So, you know, in terms of how the AF performs, it will be much more reliable in terms of its tracking and prediction with the most difficult sports and wildlife scenarios. I um, experienced that yesterday because the conditions were quite challenging in terms of lighting, very dark contrast background mm -hmm. uh, with where the basketball players actually fell under the light mm -hmm. and fast moving. Yep. The R1 especially was just the, the hit rate and the accuracy was, was incredible. Uh, and when playing back the images, it literally was like watching a, you know, a, mo a, a slow movie mm -hmm. in terms of nothing was missed, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 frames, uh, which is very, very impressive. Yeah, I mean, you've got 40 frames per second now with the R1, and each of those frames needs to be in focus and track subjects that are moving kind of erratically, or they're quite small in the frame, or they're in different or difficult lighting situations. Um, so, 
you know, everything that we've put into the R1 um, and the R5 is designed to track reliably at these higher frame rates. So, you know, you'll really feel the stickiness of the autofocus system. Um, and particularly the cross type AF is great where the subject is small or it's low contrast. And um, that happens in sports and wildlife scenarios. No, we, again, we really enjoyed using them yesterday. Um, in terms of both cameras, how do you think, how do you feel? What's your perception of how the market's going to react when this is released? Uh, Huge excitement. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's big anticipation for the successor, for the R5, um, and also the R1, because it's the flagship of the range. So it's where we sort of highlight key innovations and new technology. So yeah, I think there'll be big demand to actually get hands-on with the product, um, because what I talked about was kind of theoretical, but you actually have to go into a situation where it's basketball, football, or wildlife scenarios and actually feel the increase in power that these technologies are, are bringing, both in terms of speed, reliability, um, and image quality as well. So my next question is around lens technology. Can you discuss with us any recent advancements that you've made within that technology and how that kind of relates to the, to the new products in terms of um, in, uh, improvements? Yeah, so um, there's a lot going on between the camera and the lens, first of all, through the RF mount. So they can communicate at very high speed, which means the autofocus is going to be um, more reliable and responsive between the camera and the lens because they need strong collaboration um, for autofocus, but also, also for image stabilizer. So in both these cameras, it, you get eight and a half stops of IS, um, depending on the lens used at the center. And also you get strong edge performance um, in the IS system because it's important to correct both the center and the edges. Oh. You particularly notice that in movie. Um, so there's a lot of collaboration going on. Um, but in terms of the lens, we've also produced new types of lenses. So we've seen with the new RF lenses, things like the 2870 f2 from six years ago. That was kind of an innovative lens at the time, but we've seen more recent things like the dual fisheye lenses, which enables VR content creation. That might not be for everyone, but it's a kind of new lens technology, which is kind of out there compared to anything else is that's happening on the market. And it, sometimes it can be more subtle things as well. So making more lightweight lenses, which we've introduced as well. So we've got the 600 and the 800 um, lightweight telephotos. We've also got the 200 to 800 kind of extended wildlife yep. and sports lens, which is a nice sort of affordable lens, but offers great versatility in terms of its reach. And I know that's been really popular. Um, but we're also developing lens technology that kind of helps the lens to be more compact small size but also high quality as well so we're always considering like the optical materials we're using and the design of the lens so where we've introduced a new hybrid lens range so the 24 105 2.8 which is a concept that hasn't existed before you don't get that range with a 2.8 aperture constant we introduced that last year um, and that's a great lens for both photo and video because it's got good video characteristics and it's got good photo characteristics as well. So for the way that professionals are working now, you need more than just okay. one thing in a lens. And that's the Zoom series and it's also a Prime series as well. So we've introduced recently the 35 1.4 wide aperture lens with the, um, the iris ring and it's nicely optimised for stills and for video. So John, today's consumers, the way that they uh, behave in terms of purchasing cameras is pretty much hasn't changed over time. People are obviously looking at faster cameras in terms of speed, reliable autofocus and of course resolution. Um, can you explain a little bit more about you know, what's going on in, in the new cameras? Yeah, in both these two new cameras you've got higher speed. So with the R1 it's 40 frames per second as a maximum, but you can also customise that. So not everyone's it's like driving a Porsche, you don't drive at the fastest speed it can go at, so you can customise it down um, according to the action that you're photographing. And then the R5 is 30 frames per second, uh, so that's faster than the original R5. Um, and both cameras have reduced the rolling shutter distortion 
down to a really good level now. Um, so yeah, in terms of speed, they're much faster cameras, but they're also customizable. Um, and in terms of the autofocus, uh, because that becomes really noticeable uh, with the higher speeds, because of course you've got to have each frame in focus, so you've got to have a powerful system driving the autofocus. Um, and just to mention a few things, like the action priority mode that both cameras have. If you're shooting basketball, or you're shooting football, or volleyball, these cameras can actually recognise what the player is doing in those sports. And that's traditionally difficult to do if you're just using the controls to try and pick the player who's got the ball or is doing something interesting. So the camera now is able to actually determine the main subject by using the action priority mode. So for football it's going to make it a lot easier because the AF point switches from one player to the next as they pass the ball or they shoot or they do a throw in or the goalkeeper does a save, it will switch the AF position. So if you've not shot the sport before, that's kind of an assistive technology to do that and quite revolutionary in these uh, two new cameras. So um, that area is improved, but general tracking is also improved um, because of the accelerated capture. And the image quality is kind of top on people's priority list. So both of these have got new sensors, both stacked, both back illuminated. And in camera, you can also upscale. So both include this deep learning technology that is like an intelligent upscaling um, technology introduced in both cameras. So that can produce four times the resolution. So 96 megapixels for the R1 and 180 megapixels for the R5. And you can achieve that all in camera. And some of the advantages of that is if you want to upscale and crop. So in sports photography, sometimes that's really important because you framed a bit too wide and you still want high resolution. Um, you can now achieve that in camera. Yeah, what's quite impressive about that is it, it's in camera because I know yeah. there's some other cameras out there from uh, other manufacturers that you you can do something very similar, but you have to do it post. That's right. And of course, if you're sports and you need to send that image very quickly through, you know, uh, Wi-Fi or Ethernet um, to an agency, for example, then yep. you know, to do in camera, I think that's that's uh, that's a huge um, a bonus to to, mm -hmm. to the product. So in the environment we were in yesterday, it was obviously a very hot uh, venue. We're in the middle of summer, uh, but the cameras performed absolutely superbly. What technology is going on inside, specifically the say the R5 II, mm -hmm. in how you manage uh, the camera to adapt to those type of temperatures? Yeah, you're right. There's a lot going on in the camera. Obviously, these are fast cameras, plus they've got the new imaging platform that's working, uh, working away at high speed. So heat dissipation and heat management are key things for us to consider in both new cameras. So we've improved the internals to take the heat away from those core critical components that do get hot. So the internal structure has been revised um, to more effectively do that. And obviously with the R5, um, it has the ability to shoot up to 8K 60 frames per second in the camera. So you need to hit, dissipate heat for that. But we've also got an active cooling system um, through the optional cooling fan grip that can dissipate heat away from those critical components out from the bottom of the camera through the side. Um, so that's an additional active cooling system uh, that can be um, purchased as, a, as an accessory. So John, one final question. Thank you again for your time today. Really, really do appreciate it. I know all the Canon team are really busy and thank you for the uh, opportunity that we had to test the cameras as well. One thing I noticed about the R1 especially is it's got a new mottled kind of design uh, on the outside of the camera. Yeah. Well, how, did, how did that come about? Well, we consider each part of the camera because it's obviously our flagship and really important um, for our professionals. Um, it does have a new structure on the outside that um, is easier to grip um, and a number, number of other changes as well like the viewfinder um, is wider it's particularly fog resistant uh, which is important if you're in humid environments or wet environments you don't want the viewfinder fogging up so it's more resistant to fogging um, and you know the whole um, ergonomic mm -hmm. uh, design has been refined in this model each button is 
uh, really, really thought about. We've introduced even a new button on the back. The AF on button is now two stage rather than just one. And even things like how far that button goes in for the first stage is considered and how it feels on the second press is really important because if you're using gloves you need to kind of feel it through the glove. So all the design has been thoroughly thought about so it's easy and intuitive to use and you don't have to look at the button you can just feel for the button when you're looking through the viewfinder. John, thank you for your time and the wider Canon team for the opportunity to test the new products yesterday. That's the R5 Mark II and the Canon R1.